a little bit apprehensive today because uh, most of the panelists are a little bit feisty. So we'll have to see where this uh, ends up. But the idea, feisty. Of, the idea of these, I can think of other F words, Kevin. Um, feisty. We're from nineteen fifties. Doll, they're being feisty. I am an old man, Kevin, as you keep pointing out. Anyway, so the idea is to bring together a feisty panel to talk about a particular topic that hopefully will be relevant to uh, small business. So if you're tuning in to this live or you happen to be sort of watching a replay, you're welcome to put any comments, uh, questions, whatever, and we will try and address them as we go along. But without further ado, let's go around and meet our feisty panel. Well, Mark's not so feisty. Mark's one of the nice guys. So, uh, Mark, do you want to tell people who you are and what you do? Don't, don't tempt me. Um, so I'm Mark Osterham from Pixuma, experienced graphic designers, virtual agency providing branding, um, all sorts of design for print work, uh, websites online and uh, spec specifying, specifying, what am I looking for? Specializing in magazines. Fabulous. Uh, Kevin, who are you? What are you doing? Yep. Kevin Robinson from Your Copywriter. Uh, we provide copy for just about everything from uh, regular blog articles through to uh, things like email chains and advertising copy and various other things, all with the intention of helping people sales funnels uh, and um, occasionally uh, uh, making life easy for their customers. Excellent. And last Only bit. occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of the time. Well, we're very cheap, ML. What can I tell you? That's why. <laughs> Good job. We're talking about consistency today, isn't it? It is. Um, and last but not least, our final feisty panelist, Marie Louise. Who are you? What do you do? So I'm Marie Louise from Lovely Evolution. I'm a branding and Canva design specialist. So I help um, people build a brand and create it with Canva. I have various design done for you services and I work in a very collaborative way with my clients. Um, so they get to peer into the design process using the power of Zoom and sharing of screens. Um, they get to be involved in that design process. And for those that are kind of down the DIY approach, whether they're sort of in-house marketing people, virtual assistants, or micro businesses that are doing their marketing themselves, I offer various training options for people to learn how to use Canva and to design for themselves. When you said the power of Zoom, I was expecting you to do some sort of superhero move or something, you know, just to show how impactful Zoom is. No, anyway. I'm, not, I'm not awake enough yet and I haven't had my three gyms, so <laughs> my, my, my monkey impression come later on. Okay, I'm not sure whether I should be nervous about that or maybe be looking forward to it. Um, have you normally had three gins by this time <laughs> of the day? Don't you? <laughs> no, but I think um, when it when Paul's talking about my my very non famous impressions, um, I think I had had a glass of wine or a gin and tonic at the time. Anyway, we, we digress. Shall we get back to the point in question? So um, the, the overarching theme is uh, marketing because you're all uh, marketing bods. And um, Kevin, I'll blame you now, Kev, just in case this goes disastrously wrong, uh, suggested that we just look at the importance of consistency versus the impact of doing the unexpected or doing something that isn't in line with maybe what your customers expect of you so why don't we start with you kevin do you want to sort of like give us your thoughts and um you know just start the conversation off and let's see where it goes yeah okay i mean the the, the reason i said this is it, it i i think this is one of those things that comes up quite regularly as a bit of a um a tension uh between um a tension point rather between the 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 creators and um, quite often the the engine of marketing, if you like, you know, the, the process of marketing. It's very easy um, to market very conventionally and, and, and by, uh, by role. And in fact, there are companies, you know, um, several that we probably know who have strict packages. This is what we do for you. This will be the content. This is what happens every month. And it's likely to produce these results. And it does. Um, but the tension comes when if you look at the great marketing things of the past you know the the things that have really uh, struck a chord with with audiences and with uh, purchasers they were invariably not that 
they're invariably something wildly off the wall and creative and i suppose you know the obvious example is the guinness adverts the um yeah. you know the surfer ad where it just it was you know right in the middle of prime time television along came this ad that was to start with way too long and in black and white with somebody going it's wait it's what he does here's to you ahab you know and it's just it's absolutely nothing to the product completely off the wall but guinness went from a failing old man's drink to a, a, a student drink overnight and became one of the most popular brands in pubs in britain because of it so i don't know where'd you go you know what i mean What's Speaking the, of Guinness, i liked their advert with the evolution one yeah go bigger <laughs> i thought that, that was quite clever as well <laughs> yeah yes absolutely and because the, they maintain that afterwards you know they just carry on doing it um brewdog have got one at the minute sorry i, I, I want to I know you want to pass this on, but Brewdog have got one at the minute where they're the anti sponsors of the World Cup. Mm, so, uh, mm. um, anti sponsors. Is, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's the world, and they put an F in cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, and, and I'm just, I looked at it and I thought, do you know whether you like Brewdog or not? That is, that is a perfect thing, whether it's honest or genuine or not. It's got the conversation going. Um, it may well be a genuine objection to the World Cup. I've got an objection to the World Cup this year for the same reasons. Um, uh, you know, but that's that's a great example of difference engine marketing, isn't it? Well, they're taking a stand, don't they? And the, and the the proof is in the pudding, really, as to what they do next, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if this is just a gimmick, they'll just do it once, and and then then they'll take a stand somewhere else or a different view. If they continue to have this sort of ethical approach in all their advertising, all their marketing, all their social media, then that will continue to then to build the idea that Brewdog are prepared to stand out by their mm. principles, aren't they? Um, yeah. 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 I mean, yes. and, and, you know, and another example every year is, is we get a plethora of now expected ads at Christmas, but every year they're all trying to do something different, aren't they, with those ads at Christmas? What's, what's your view on Christmas, ML? Oh, <laughs> That's a touchy subject for me today. <laughs> I thought we were going to say the C word today. I, okay, I, I, I will not be poo pooed by Paul Green. We can talk about Christmas. For those that are watching that are wondering why this is so cliquey, um, I did ask the panel what they would like to talk about. And as we are approaching the C uh, season, uh, uh, Marie Louise suggested talking about Christmas. And I didn't want to do that because I thought it'd be a little bit too specific and not evergreen. However, because they are very feisty, we're on the topic of Christmas. So, ML, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Kevin's right in, in talking, you know, in, he's given some really good examples about, you know, in terms of doing things that are unexpected, they're going to be more memorable. But it does have to be uh, tempered by having that consistent message out there you, you know it's all very well if you only did weird ad hoc like very guerrilla marketing tactics um you know that it may not work in the long term it might just become this sort of gimmicky thing i think it should be uh the, the kind of unexpected and really sort of big things you know they don't necessarily have to be expensive things but certainly something that is really putting yourself out there I think should be sort of more of a, a an occasional thing um, and it needs to be on balance with that kind of consistent message so for example um, if we go with Apple as a brand you know they've got very consistent advertising and message but they do occasionally come out with sort of very uh, cutting edge and certainly historically cutting edge methods of getting their um, their marketing message out there but they've been doing the kind of solid groundwork beneath that as well they're still doing you know doing the print advertising doing you know the you know all the other forms of advertising there so it needs to be a bit of both really in my opinion I, I get I guess to link what you're saying in terms of the consistency aspect of it you know with like Brewdog and Guinness and with the Christmas ads you know everybody's expecting certainly from the you know, the next Guinness ad, is it going to be better and different to the last one? Same with Brewdog, you know, that they're known for sort of their disruptive marketing, 
techniques. You're never quite sure what they're going to do, but it'll be something controversial. So I guess that's their consistency, isn't it? And then, you know, everybody's waiting for all the Christmas ads to come out to find out, you know, what they're doing this year, which one's the best, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it does get quite a frenzy going, I guess, you know, around the Christmas period and these companies that are known for doing something that is going to be a little bit, you know, um, out of the norm, I guess. Well, I think that's part of it, isn't it? It's almost like you can to some extent get away with being consistently inconsistent if so I mean like so so um with um uh with tango some years ago they started doing a sequence of really just all their ads were wacky they weren't necessarily connected together apart from they had a sort of hidden camera vibe about them a little bit um but the guinness adverts have all been unusual and there's not, uh, but this thing to me, I suppose, that strings them together is the very high production values, very high art sort of concept stuff most of the time, isn't it? And now they're tending to be the last, I can't remember the specifics, but I remember over the last few years, what they've tended to do is just use black and white things so that there's, there's sort of things that are uh, alluding to the pint of Guinness, but not actually showing any of the drink at all. But it's in there. That's their consistent aspect. But it's still doing sort of adverts that are trying to grab your attention. Uh, but I think if they went to something that was very high heart, very high art, and then said, then did something like the Tango adverts, just really weird and wacky and, and cheaper sort of look, then then that would break. It would still be inconsistent, but in the wrong way for them somehow. Um, mm. And it's a trick. I think it's a tricky balance to get because I think the most logical way to do it is to do the apple way which is to be absolutely down the line consistent with everything you know really really contain the stuff very well but brands like guinness get away with doing things a little bit different but they've got such a strong brand behind it and they and and i say i suppose that production value and, and everything else holds it together doesn't it yeah. well they've so, also it... taken that that um first step <coughs> of doing something to really shake things up I'd be interested to know because you've got the um, the perception of the, the the big advertising companies and and you know advertising and a general kind of marketing and brand um, you know plan and strategy can be a little bit you know two different things and it would be interesting to know um, you know how much autonomy that the advertisers you know for these big brands whether because they're coming up with all these out there ideas, how does that fit in with the grand scheme of what that brand is trying to do? Like, when is yeah. it just purely a gimmick and can be detracting from the brand itself? Or is it back to that thing of like, all, all kind of PR, all advertising is good advertising as it were? I, I, I think, but that's that's kind of the tension of it, isn't it? I think I think you've hit there right on where the tension is. You know, at, at what point does the desire for um, consistent, solid marketing um, need to give way for somebody who's just had a really, really good idea about something? You know, that that is really going to work, and and that's probably why more and more. Um, advertising and, and and particularly tech companies these days have what they call these x departments isn't it where they they just allow people to think out, out off the wall ideas and come up with something ogilvy has one now um and google have one but but the but but you know mark mentioned tango there and tango are masters of this and and and, and they used they did all the repeat of those adverts where it was all something really strange and and, it, and i think response is quite often you know response to outside is quite often where people get really creative with the um uh, uh the less consistent marketing because one of the tango ones um the asa banned it they, they mm. upheld it because it was about a megaphone and, the, and and kids were sending off this free megaphone and then using it to bully people in school playgrounds you know <laughs> so the asa went can you stop that please so they did a follow-up ad um which was um um just i think it was actually james corden just reading a newspaper for 30 seconds because this ad had been banned and they bought the airtime. So when at the end of about 27 seconds in, he just looked up the camera and went and just carried on, you know. And that is that's an amazing response, isn't it, to an external pressure mm. to keep your advertising campaign going. Um, so it's that, but it doesn't have to be big, you know. You talked about high concept, and I don't think it does. I think I think it, it doesn't need that. It, you know, it, it, at that level, you do. But I think at, at the SME level and at our level of, of you know, our client's level, we can do something interesting now and again. 
I did the Haribo thing. Me and Stephen Church with the Haribo thing is a great example of that. Such a minor disruptive thing to do was that I gave out Haribo in that uh, in a network meeting. And then Stephen came, you know, blessing two weeks. He's a good and dear friend of mine. Two weeks afterwards and gave out cupcakes just to one-up me on the previous thing. Well, you know, that's that's just the Guinness advert on a smaller level, isn't it? Mm. We're, just... we're, we're all waiting anticipation for your next response, Kevin, so no pressure. Well, so let's put it this way. Little, Stephen knows... little cans of Guinness or something at this rate. No, no, no. <laughs> Steve, Stephen has learned never to stamp on a burning bag on his doorstep, though. <laughs> there is that so bring, bringing it back to the small business world then um you know should should small businesses use a more of a disruptive approach every now and again or not or should they sort of sort of keep on the straight and narrow because i guess there's a there's a higher risk involved as a small business of getting it I think, wrong and I think you know, there is a higher risk involved because the uh, what i was going to say was the um the bigger brands can get away with this to a certain extent because they're bigger brands you know they're they Part of the uh, thing about John Lewis ads is that it's, it's sort of self-referential, isn't it? People get wanting to know what the, they're going to do next. It becomes such a big thing. Um, but also, I think it would apply to them and to the SMEs that you, as, as long as the thing that you do isn't against your values uh, and hopefully is fully within line what, uh, with them, then then I think you're, you're okay, aren't you? And you, as a small business, you can do things unusual. Uh, as a little standout as long as it doesn't break from who you are or or suddenly seem to you seem to be changing direction or something like that um i mean I, it's a slightly off the wall reference but it's the first thing i sort of thought of in terms of this is we see people frequently in networking online on social media you know i can think of a couple of examples at, at least where people turn up doing something and then you don't see them for six months and then there's a new big thing there's something else yeah they're doing something different and it reminds me of i don't know if anyone's seen the um morgana robinson impression of natalie cassidy from eastenders where she's just doing this and it turns up and she's doing something oh i'm doing this now it's something completely different whatever whatever it is she's just she's now working as a cleaner or she's now doing this or she's doing something else oh, i'm just doing this now and it's sort of I, that's whenever i think of people when they pop up on linkedin once a year every six months Oh, we've got this brand new course we're running or we've got this new uh, event we're running or we're now doing this service or whatever and then you don't hear from them again and then it pops up again and this is either this the same thing but it's so much later or it's it's actually something different and it's the, for me the consistency there is it's better to do something small and do it regularly and and, and be consistent with it than some massive great event and then disappear because it's just so short-lived but Paul, Paul keeps talking about this, keeps saying, oh, you know, do this disruptive stuff. And unless you have the repeat, mm. unless you have, you can't disrupt, you know, no. not, not, not at the SME level anyway, unless you've got that regular output and that regular thing, you know, you, I, how do you disrupt that if, you, if you've not got it there in the framework in the first place? So the, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I don't, would anybody, I don't, I don't think anybody in marketing would ever argue that you should only do that kind of unexpected stuff because to start with you're making a rod for your own back that every couple of weeks you've got to be wildly creative haven't you mm -hmm. um you know but it but it's well it's, as you say it can't be unexpected if they didn't have anything to expect from you in the first place absolutely yeah 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 totally yeah so you can't disrupt unless you've got something to disrupt can you it's, it's it stands to reason so i guess i mean i don't know where the the line is between those those two things is um and and <coughs> or even whether things like you know like canva has templates that, that, that and obviously some are going to be more popular than others the ones that ml creates are obviously the most popular we assume in it. um but you do tend to see now don't you it's particularly on social media you do tend to see repeat of a specific background a specific picture i i'm that meeting with that woman going like that in a big jumper to four other people in a um, in a in a in a, a um, in an office, you know, a glass office. I must have seen that six times this month already. You know, it's a great picture, but stop using it now. You know, so there is a point where steady and consistent and having access to these things actually does start to work against you, doesn't it? Mm. You know. Well, I think that comes down to um, you know knowing the marketplace and being aware of what's going around you and. 
there's a difference between being aware of what your competitors are doing or what the trends are for this course or that technique of sales um you know in terms of like lead magnets funnels all these different tools to get you to market um it's about making sure that you're doing it for the right reason for your business and um how can you inject inject your own brand's personality and i guess that comes back to sort of going back to the the basic of you know what does your brand stand for you know what's what's your vision for your business and leading with that in in the decisions that you're making rather than oh bob over there's doing that so i'll do it too you know um and then you have this thing of everyone's doing the same thing and if you're not doing it you feel like you should be doing it without actually considering that that kind of marketing technique whatever it is whether it's disruptive marketing or sending out jelly beans uh, or or you know bringing cupcakes whatever the technique might be but the other side of it is you know the for me the word disruptive or dis you know is almost has quite a negative kind of tone to me like because it's it's about being a bit controversial potentially and i think that's where you can be disruptive by being unexpected and it can be in a positive way like you know sending a gift package through to a client or someone that you've connected with it can be i know mark is very good at uh, doing uh, follow-up calls with past clients and just with no agenda just hey how are you doing um and that's unexpected but it's not necessarily a negative thing and i think when you're a small business doing something that's disruptive but like in a controversial potentially negative or offensive way could be recipe for disaster and for that you'd have to be really really clear on your own brand message and vision that actually you you want to put your your middle finger up to everyone yeah. <laughs> because the right people be like yeah stop the middle finger up and you know that you're connecting with those right people who um identify and celebrate that kind of um like attitude as it were but you know we're in a time where we're all so very sensitive we're all there on our keyboards <laughs> you know i've put stuff out there which i didn't think was offensive and have experienced backlash you know albeit very occasionally over the years and you never know how someone's going to um you know receive your post and the same thing can be said for um you know if you're deliberately putting something out there that you know is going to offend a few people you have to be very mindful and expect that backlash and i mean you know it's a a lottery that we 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 do with just showing up <laughs> just mm -hmm. having an opinion just trying to run a business um but i think it's it's making sure that um, what you're doing have you sense checked it from different angles particularly if you're going to do something that is really unexpected really out there really potentially con controversial is there someone that you can kind of check first to see you know look at it from different angles because you don't want someone boycotting your business because you never know how something might really take off as a sort of anti-campaign against you mm. yeah yeah uh, but the other end of that of course is and this i think is 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 the real dilemma of it all when you're talking about offense and you're talking about being genuinely you know disruptive because people are of a controversial view or whatever is that the other end of that is if you don't do any of that whatsoever what you become is vanilla and and, mm. and, and bland and nobody sees you and and i think the classic example of that is i know for a fact that, that several beers sponsor several different cups for rugby and football, but I couldn't tell you which one does what or whatever. There's because... quite a lot of green, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. But that's, you know, I mean, who knows who knows who they are? What does Carling do? Is Carling the FA Cup? I don't know. I'm not a clue. I just know that beers sponsor sports games now because, the, the you know, the, 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 the unusual nature of it. Um, in that case, forced, of course, by rules about how they can sell alcohol these days. Um, has meant that it's become bland it's become vanilla so it's not it's no longer interesting you know so i, I don't know it, it is about the channels as well isn't it you know if, if we come back to the the, the guinness idea they're they're ab tv advertising obviously you know they spend a lot of money and they do something quite off the wall uh, and very arty but they don't 
they don't do that with their packaging. They don't suddenly decide one week to make them, oh, we're going to do it in glass bottles and make it look like Coke bottles. We don't don't change the logo. They don't change the um, the packaging fundamentally. I mean, like I say, I was going to say that I think they, I think Guinness might be the Rugby World Cup. I'm not sure, but they, they sponsor rugby, I think. <clears throat> and on those times, you might see the packaging has got some sort of flag or, or, or rugby or whatever mm. sort of uh, motif. But it still doesn't. It's still obvious that it's them because when you're looking, when you're walking down the the aisle, uh, alcohol aisle, you don't want to be looking at everything, trying to work out where the Guinness is. If the Guinness, yeah. That's what you want. You want to be able to just scout it, and there it is, because it's it's consistent. The same is true of probably of their customer service, the, all of the phone lines, uh, their print advertising. You know, each each of the channels is probably treated quite differently. So, you know, you've got your, your packaging is one thing. It's very consistent and, and quite formal. Um, and you want your, uh, the website is probably, uh, and the um, customer service side of things is probably quite formal and, and, and controlled in that sense. But then the TV advertising goes one way and the, and the social media, I don't follow them on, but I'm suspecting that there's somewhere in between that they do sort of slightly um, rev, irreverent sort of things here and there, but they're, they have got a consistent message that they do there. It'll be different again, but the whole thing ties together because you know it, it, it wouldn't be appropriate to change some of these other things in the same way. And the, yeah. and the, the same is true with the TV advertising. You know, I mean, admittedly, it worked because I can remember the name, but the bloody awful Verishore adverts um, with the terrible acting in it. Um, they they're just just awful adverts. And then there's also the ones which haven't worked because I can't remember which one it is, but there's sort of the generic life insurance ones where you get somebody in a conservatory and friends just popped around to say hello. And, yeah. oh, and you get a pen just for inquiring. And, and it's like, oh, God. Yeah. yeah, they're just, you know, they're absolutely awful. And, I've, and got, I've, got, I've, got loads, I've got loads of free pens out of that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is your pen style going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. So, so it, with... So let's get back to the small business side then. So with, uh, you touched on, I think you, Kevin, sort of said, you know, standing out from the crowd, and that's particularly important on social media uh, platforms because there's a lot of stuff going going through that. Do, do you think, what, what are your thoughts on whether businesses are drawn towards doing something like a little bit maybe off key or out of brand to, le to leverage that and stand out on, you know, on reels or stories or TikToks or whatever it might be. Do you th is that a positive thing? What, what, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, you're asking me, Paul, sorry. Was that... uh, I, I'll ask, I'll, I'm happy to anybody to answer the question, but as you started. I mean, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's think about this from, from, from the point of view, right? We are constrained. We're all constrained. I'm constrained. Mark is, you know, Mark's producing, he, he, Mark's work is incredible, right? I'm, I'm a big fan of what the stuff Mark does. He's a, he's a great designer, but he... Other designers are available. <laughs> I'll get to you in a second. <laughs> Sorry, the fight so, in this was kicking in. I'm a, I'm a great fan of, of Mark's work, and, and then there's ML, and... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, I think you're good as well. I think you're brilliant. But but, but the point is, if, if ML is doing a design for uh, your book cover she did recently, you are constrained by the size of that book cover. If Mark is making a leaflet for somebody doing a magazine, he's constrained by the size of that book. If I'm writing an article for somebody doing their website, I'm constrained by the size of those pages. You know, so we all have um, um, structures that we have to work in. It, and and it, what it's about is what you do within that framework, isn't it? And I think the important thing is as long as you're consistent and you stay within that framework. You know, the thing that works, for, and, and, and when I say constrained by that, I mean because that's what the the, the, the the viewer has to have. You know, it has to be A4 sized, so Mark has to use his space effectively. ML's got a space for book cover to do those book covers in. It has to have the title. It has to have the things we need. As long as you keep those, there's a kind of bit after that, isn't there, where you can be creative. There's a way you can do something interesting and do something clever. And I think from a small business point of view, you have to understand that outside stuff, which is why it's really important if you're going to be using camera for your marketing, you do go through ML first because that's what she's giving you, how to use those frames and know what you're doing there, you know, and how to, to, to make that effective. And then if you're the small business, I would say at least part of the time, live in that gray area a little bit. What can you do that's slightly unusual? Um, it doesn't always work. I've just run five ads in a row for in in. in magazine that mark did none of which have paid off made me laugh we all thought it was hilarious here and they were going to be great not a response they but are. i'm doing i'm doing the sixth sorry good man, good man. 
got to be done. But I think there is that grey area. Live it, live it, live it. Occasionally, just live in that grey area. I think is what I'm saying. You know, there is a gap for you to do something a little bit interesting, a little bit unusual. I think it's it's yeah. Do also, I I, I still maintain do something and do it regularly, do it consistently. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be something big. It just needs to be something, because you know the, it, you talk about social media. You know, um, you don't need to be on all the different platforms, and you don't need to be doing print advertising, TV, TV advertising, podcasts, radio, uh, you know, network, all these different things. You don't have to do everything of everything. Um, and I think because otherwise then you end up not doing any of it very well. So you're better off just picking a few things, just doing them in a small way, the way that you can do consistently. And don't, and also we mentioned, you mentioned TikTok. Um, I personally don't think you should just sort of bandwagon something. Oh, everyone else is doing this, so I should do that. Because... If you don't really have a plan of how you're going to do it or why it's going to benefit you, then it's it's probably a waste of time, and it, and you could have spent that time doing something else. You know, I'm I'm not looking at TikTok. I don't think it's something that really. You're not you're not going to sort of dance along. I'm not that sort of person, really. No, no. I think we all my, want to see that though. It's not my yeah. personality. Uh, dance, a, monkey, dance. Yeah, it's not my personality from a business <laughs> side of things. I'm not had enough drink, um, <laughs> but um, and and I don't know who it's aimed at i know it's a younger audience generally it's probably not, uh, it's not your probably, audience, so, but but that applies in a wider context you know i'm not doing uh, other things as well i'm just trying just trying to keep to the things that i'm comfortable that i can do regularly and i think they're appropriate and and work within them i hate bandwagoning bandwagon bandwagoning is it will it will kill you faster than anything it's, it's an awful idea don't mm. just don't play with it at all just you know stick to you like yeah. ML said, stick to your, stick to what is you and what the core of what you do. It, it, don't jump on the back. And in fact, we talked about Brewdog earlier. If you look down the responses to that, um, which I was doing at sort of half past five this morning when I saw that ad, I went and looked at the responses. And about every third one is, oh, another woke company jumping on the bandwagon here. You know? And that's and it, that it will appear to be that if they don't do anything else. Yeah. If they keep at it and they demonstrate that this is genuinely how they feel about stuff, then it will be it'll have more impact on it. I, th I think, yeah, I think, you know, you, you, you've touched on it. I think there is a tendency, you know, as soon as something new comes out on a social media platform or a new social media platform comes out, then, you know, you feel you've got to be part of it. But I think you've, you've got to be conscious of, you know, where your target market hangs out. Is your audience actually going to be there? What What is it going to do to your brand doing silly little dances or, or mimes to music tracks or whatever i think you know you, you you've got to be and I, i'm not sure that all this is i think they think oh they've got to go and do something wacky now because everybody else is but it's it's got to be relevant to you to you as a business hasn't it and whether it fits inside of your overall marketing strategy and uh, uh you know whether those channels are right for you so I saw something along those lines recently um over the um sort of on the run up to Halloween, there was a post that kept popping up on, well, I saw it on Instagram. Um, it was probably came up on other places as well, but um, it was um, as if, uh, you know, like a Halloween costume sort of packaging and you put oh, yourself you as that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Up as that. So the first one I saw was like, that amused me was, I think, you know, fancy dress you know halloween costume to be a designer and mm. it was sort of like a steve jobs type <laughs> outfit with yeah. a sort of uh boy george type you know black hat um and sort of that kind of made me giggle a bit i was like yeah that's funny and then i just kept seeing them pop up where there must be some you know some, some template or generator yeah. or something yeah. and i just kept seeing it and so like after like the third or fourth one it, i was bored of it and it was clearly sort of became this sort of everyone thought it was hilarious and great oh i'll do one but there came a saturation point where i was fed up with it and and it was it became not fun and you know oh that's quite humorous it, it, it became unoriginal nine, and gimmicky yeah, I definitely got bored with seeing them. You know, I, I, I'm with you. The first two or three are like, oh, these are interesting. And then it's like, oh, hang on. And, yeah. and it, just, it just becomes some other meme. Oh, yeah, so, if you, were, so if, you got on it, if you got on it early and kind of went, yes. oh, how did they do that? Great, I'm going to do one quick. Then you'd be on the wave of, of it being kind of still quite new, fun, you know, 
but if you were doing it because you're like oh everyone else is doing it i'm going to do it too you're sort of in the sea of sameness well that's you can't the thing is that the first person the first people to do it they were creating weren't they they were making they were they were generating something if you're simply copying it or jumping on it then you you can't you can't get the same impact because you, you it's clear what you're doing you're just just hanging on to coattails of somebody else yeah. um, and like all these things they're just tools aren't they so you know the tools are very effective if they're in the right hands so canva is a fantastic tool but not in the wrong hands you know it is you've got to know what you're doing with it um and it's no no use just saying oh well we're going to do our own design work now because we can buy we can use canva and it's, it's quite cost effective yeah we bought a canva effective if we turn out a load of more rubbish but but they, this is i mean that is the gap that i think probably all three of us dwell in as well isn't it is the difference mm -hmm. between what is accessible to people who don't do our job and people who do do our jobs you know and, yeah. and and i think people do look at to us to be a little bit creative and to give them the guidance and stuff they need and i'm always really wary of you know when you see um um do my three-day course of of marketing superiority and at the end of it you'll be able to find and i just think no you won't you probably really won't because unless unless you you are you are tuned to that difference you know that little bit of something in the first place um that we all can't make like, yourself into something you're not cannot make exactly and and you know learning canva will not make you ml it will make you produce that that good stuff that goes out every day if you, you know if you if you practice but it's not going to make you ml and, and, and learning to use photoshop is not going to make you mark you know yeah. you, you, uh, so th there is um, uh, uh, that, well, how, that buying a, a fancy uh, DSLR camera doesn't make you a photographer. No, Th these, these are all tools, and um, it's knowing your, <coughs> your your limitations. And I think you know, doing you know DIYing stuff as a small business is is part of the kind of life cycle of going through. But there, there comes a point if if you want to make real impact, then working with a uh, with the expert is going to level up what you're doing that activity yeah hmm. yeah we as you know about i have sort of asked you to sort of like get some people to stop putting their camera designs up on social media because they hurt my eyes um i think you have worked with certain people to to, to evolve that but you know there are certain things you know I, i've some would say stalked i've followed you and uh you know learned a lot on canva and i think you know whilst i still make a few faux pas uh, i think my my sort of canva graphics have got a lot better over time and a little bit more uh, consistent than they were because there's just stuff you don't know you don't know you know just sort of but like i'm not claiming with the with the the teaching the the way my training you know because i have various offerings around that I don't promise to make someone a professional graphic designer mm. for them going through it because it's aimed at those who are DIYing, whether yeah. they're that virtual assistant or small business owner. And so it's recognizing that they've got limitations and that their ambition is not to become the next graphic designer uh, and all of that. But I do, I have seen it where there are people um outside of my kind of circle of influence who you know i see it with the stuff they're promoting that they're, they're, they've clearly been using canva for like a year and suddenly they're this design guru and you're like well that 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 kind of gets my nose out of joint because you know i i've studied design i've studied branding i've been in the industry for a long time and so that has worth and i happen to use canva as the tool and it's well, like what Mark yeah, said I, is that you can have the tool, but it doesn't automatically magically make you, you know, yeah. you can have a social media scheduler, doesn't make you a social media guru. Yeah, I think we've all we've all felt that pain, haven't we? We've seen, we've and I think it's coming back to the, the subject of consistency. If you're not if you're if you want to do uh, consistent social media messages on specific platforms, but you're not very good at it, or you want to do consistent um graphics for um leaflets or brochures or, or websites or something or you want to write regular blogs but you're not very good at it then the key is to spot those things and still aim to have that consistency but get some help you know get help with the bits that you can't do very well so that you still maintain that consistency because if you try and take it on yourself and you take on too much stuff something you'll drop the ball somewhere um and then you're just wasting your time 
Yeah, and and you can be trained, and and I do half days training as well on basic copywriting skills and all that sort of stuff, and 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 I, you know, I'm promising competence. I'm not promising uh, outstanding skills. You know, I'm, I'm promising enough that that you can you you can do it yourself to a certain level. And I think to promise above that is, um, as a lot of those marketing courses do, is um, uh, 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 disingenuous at times. You know, if you were going to be a great graphic designer you'd have probably done it for a job in the first place, wouldn't you, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So just before we wrap this up then, just uh, some of us touched on, uh, uh, which we didn't sort of like go. There's a uh, lot of touching going on. Yeah, it's quite inappropriate actually, Paul. You know we're live. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not It's not the virtual pub now, guy. <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> now you've made me forget. You know, I haven't forgot the question. So on the con controversy side, um, you know, is there a balance for, you know, put having a post, let's say, that is a little bit edgy that, you know, it is going to actually get uh, not someone's nose up, nose out of joint or, or rub them up the wrong way, but to get some traction, to get some engagement? Because if it's just a bland post that doesn't do that, is it worth posting anything at all? So do, what, what are your It's only for shock value, then I'd say no. If there is yeah. an underlying thing of that, it... it leans into your you know your core values and your um you know i've seen quite a few really interesting posts around uh coaching and you know the ethics behind you know that there's a sort of recognition that there is there is some bad practice going on i guess like in any industry there are um but it seems to sort of suffer with it quite a lot more there's a, a lot more coaches out there and coaching courses etc cetera, etc cetera. And so I think there's been some quite interesting um, disruptive posts out there, which is it's about starting the conversation and, and around that, you know, have you experienced that and, and stuff like that. And that is aligned with that person's core message of what they're trying to do. And so it's relevant and there will be some controversial things that would come out in the comments and the debate there. Uh, or, or, or people sharing their experiences but I think if you're just purely doing it to shake things up then that's a bit disingenuous it's it's mm. it's gimmicky but if it is doing it from the point of view that you're wanting to really showcase why you're different or or starting that conversation in some way or being vulnerable you know sharing a side of yourself uh, that can be a bit disruptive as it were a bit different um then that kind of picture perfect facade that we try and put out there as professionals being being a bit vulnerable at times can can be um really impactful too but unfortunately i mean the thing is with social media which is generally where that stuff occurs isn't it you know more than anywhere else it's weaponized itself because if you do something controversial it tweaks the algorithm you know you get the rows you get the responses you get people coming back to you and suddenly you pushed up the algorithm pushes yeah. you up in, in terms of engagement so it's it's so sort of weaponized you've itself you've got to then then you've got to take the katie hopkins approach of becoming more and more divisive with every single post you put out otherwise yeah. you don't maintain that level and that, and that's where it becomes a problem i think i agree entirely with what um ml said in terms of you know encouraging a conversation is fine as long as the point at which you're the question you're asking is genuine or the, st the side of the argument you're taking is your side of the argument. And you're not just raising something to say, you know, just to just to get a, an empty conversation going, because then it doesn't doesn't lead to anything. You know, you could put a post out and say, oh, I think Elon Musk is brilliant or I think Elon Musk is rubbish. You know, that, that would get some traction. That would get people com commenting one side or the other. But it doesn't really mean anything. It's just empty. Whereas if you say if you could compare it to something that he's done or something he said, and what you or thought. if you're a social media expert and you're you're the, then and it's relevant because of you know yeah. the things around Twitter and da, 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 then you're having a conversation. If you're relating yeah. it back to your area of expertise, it makes sense. That that you're relating or, or your ethics. If you're relating to your ethics and your standpoint as well, you know, saying yeah. Well, yeah. I disagree with him on this and this is why, and you give a bit of detail rather than just a two line something or other. You know, you just got to have. Uh, you know, or I being controversial because there might be sort of aspects of what he's done that you agree with and you explain those things but also counter it with maybe other things so it sort of helps people to see another viewpoint on it rather than sort of the headline yeah. you know um response as it were yeah 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 
<coughs> Absolutely. I mean, the most, the, the, without a doubt, the most popular post that on LinkedIn that I put up, whether it, you know, hints, tips, do all the stuff that we all do on LinkedIn, undoubtedly is my Monday thought for Monday morning that I do it in the bath, I do in the bath usually. Um, oh, on Monday morning, you know, just a random, that's an image for you all, isn't it? Thanks. But just, just a random thought that's going through my head, you know, and, I'll put that, and that gets sometimes gets a huge amount of engagement, more than any other post. But it's, but it's because it's it's you being you, isn't it? That's it, you're, 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 you're not just making up stuff just to get, or what, what will prompt a, what will prompt a response. You're you're writing what you believe. Uh, yeah, but, but, but... I know, yeah, I am, I am I'm joking. Mean, I mean, thanks, well. thanks, for, thanks for sharing that. I didn't realise you had a bath that often. No. So, okay, so on that note, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks to my feisty panellists today. Uh, we're here every Tuesday at 11 o'clock talking about some random thing. It's not always as bad as this one, but hopefully you can tune into a future one and see how, it can be. <laughs> see how it can be improved. Thanks a lot, guys.